Uh, can I have everyone's attention, please? Oh, are you starting now? Alright, and let us go. Can talks, insight, tools, inspiration. So, my book, Grace, the title is a spoiler. So, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern's Um, I titled it Heads or Tales, which is an important thing, so. It's basically a companion to Hamlet. Uh, Hamlet, when he's depressed because his dad died, and his uncle marries his mom a day after his dad died, and his uncle's like, I don't understand why you're upset. So he calls these two guys to come figure out why Hamlet's so sad. So this story is basically following their story rather than Hamlet's, and it's incredibly random. The scenes switch automatically. One second they're in a forest, and then the next they're in a castle. So. Uh, they meet some actors in a forest, and they talk, and then they end up in a castle, and the actors are there again. And then they hang out in the castle, and then they're on a ship, and they meet pirates, and then they hide in barrels, and then they die. So, <laughs> that's the book in a nutshell. So, the most important thing I'd say is that Rosencrantz and Guildenstern play this game called Heads or Tails. Probably know what it is. You flip a coin, you guess. I think you're and then whoever gets it gets the coin. So the problem here is that the coin has landed on heads 92 times in a row, which greatly disturbs Guildenstern to the point where he's having basically a crisis about God and fate, and he doesn't understand why the coin keeps landing on heads because it's obviously going to lead to their inevitable doom. So he keeps trying to tell Rosencrantz this, and Rosencrantz does not care. He's just kind of like. I feel bad that I keep winning, so maybe you should guess heads <laughs> next time. But Guildenstern just keeps wanting to talk about fate and how they probably en entered a parallel dimension where probability doesn't exist anymore, and he gets really into it. The point is, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are opposites, and yet no one can tell them apart. Uh, they even look different, but no one knows which one is Rosencrantz and which one is Guildenstern. Not even they know who they are. When someone talks to them, they don't know who should respond. They don't know if Rosencrantz should respond or if Guildenstern should respond. And yet, one of these guys is having a crisis about fate, and he doesn't even know who he is. He doesn't even know his name. It's pretty ridiculous. So, they're complete opposites. And they are like the two sides of the coin. Guildenstern is the head of the coin, because he's, you know, the thinker, he's the leader. Rosencrantz is the tail of the coin. But then at the end of the novel, they switch because um, they finally figure out they're going to die because Hamlet wrote a letter to a king that says, kill these two guys, and they read it, and they know they're going to die. And Rosencrantz suddenly isn't very carefree. He's very concerned with death, and Guildenstern is kind of like, it might as well happen, so whatever. So basically what it comes down to is they have two different ideas. Rosencrantz focuses on the idea that everything is Random. <laughs> and then uh, Guildenstern thinks everything is fate and destiny. We're supposed to do this. So the whole novel is basically fate versus chance. It's very cool. I would not put it in curriculum because if you're going to have a play, a British play about Hamlet, <coughs> I'd put in Hamlet. <laughs> <laughs> Hamlet was really good. You should all read it. Uh, this was really good too. It's a dark comedy, um, but I wouldn't put it in the curriculum just because it is so random and it seems pretty unnecessary.